Hey everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd who likes to film stuff and it is comparison time. We have two devices here. This is the Snapdragon model of the Galaxy S4 and this is the Exynos OctaCore version. So I have had enough time to play with both of these guys. I've had this one for about a week now and I'm ready to talk about the differences that I'm seeing between these two. One thing to pay attention to is that both of these devices are very, very new. And as time goes by, there's going to be a lot of bug fixes and updates, but I'm going to talk about the differences that I'm seeing as for now, although some things such as battery life might change. The first thing that I want to get into when talking about either of these phones, one that might actually help you decide right off the bat, is about warranty. Typically, a warranty will only be valid in the country of origin that you had purchased the product. So just say that you are from the United States and you absolutely must have the Exynos International version, the i9500. The problem is that there is a very good chance that if something goes wrong internally with the phone, you're not going to have a valid warranty in the United States. If that happens, you're, you're, you're kind of screwed. So the best thing to do is either get the version that came from your particular country and be happy with it, or to get an insurance plan. I use N squared, for example. Here is my Galaxy Note 2. This is Jose, poor guy. I am traveling right now. I am in France, and the first thing I did in France was I got out of the car from the airport and dropped my Note 2 on the floor. Now there's this beautiful, sizable crack. So N squared is my insurance provider, and they're going to get me a brand new phone. So in place of a warranty, I purchased an insurance plan, and not only is it expensive to import an international phone, but I also would have to fork out the extra money for an insurance plan. So if you don't want that extra responsibility, again, just get the one that's from your country. Still, there are some major downsides of insurance plans. The first one that I can think of is that it's not a perfect substitute for a warranty. For example, just say that something goes wrong with your phone and you call them, they'll say, well, how long are you into the warranty period of that phone? And you'll say, well, it hasn't been a year yet. And you'll say, well, I don't have a warranty. And they're going to say, what we actually offer is an extended warranty. And it doesn't start until after the original warranty of your device ends. So you actually don't have a warranty, usually, with an insurance plan at all. So in that case, you're screwed, unless you happen to break your device. And then they will be nice and get you a new device for you. The other thing is that a lot of insurance providers do not provide insurance for international phones. The reason that I have gone with N squared is that they don't care whether it's a local version or an international version. They will cover it just the same because they get their phones from the original place that they came from. So somebody like N squared is awesome. First I tried with security and once they found out that I had an international phone they canceled my policy and people like Square Trade don't cover international phones at all. So if you don't want to deal with any shenanigans just get again the one from your country. It's probably the smartest thing to do. Next let's talk about these phones from a compatibility standpoint. I was watching Google I.O. and there was an awesome announcement that a lot of you are aware of that there is a Galaxy Nexus S4. And that means that it's going to be completely vanilla Android. Instead of being a new Nexus phone, they're just going to put the Nexus vanilla Android onto the Galaxy S4. Now that's not going to be available for the i9500, the octa-core version. It's only going to be available for the Galaxy S4 Snapdragon S600. So a lot of people are having their dreams dashed and scattered, but what is it that you really expect? Most of the world is getting the S600, the Snapdragon version, so I think if you want the most relevant device, it's probably best to go with the Snapdragon version. Plus, since there are so many more devices that are Snapdragon version, there's probably going to be a lot more development for this particular device as well. So this one seems to be the overall massive, important one that is the most relevant. One of the biggest differences that I am seeing between both of these phones is the cameras. Actually, they have two different camera sensors inside of them. The one that's inside of the i9500 is actually a little bit newer than the one that is inside of the i9505, or this is technically the AT&T version. So this is Exmer RS and this is Exmer R, or codename IMX135 and codename IMX91PQ. So not only are these camera sensors different, but actually this one shows a lot more detail and just the processing is a lot better. I'm going to show you quite a few samples. So I have 
some videos and photos to show you, but overall, this guy takes it. The biggest glaring difference between both of these devices are the processors that we've been hearing so much about. So for this guy, he is so envied because he's got eight cores. Well, actually, you're never running eight cores at the exact same time. You're only running four of them, which means that you have two different clusters. You've got Cortex-A15s, which are clocked at 1.6 gigahertz, unless you have the Korean model, which is clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. And then you also have another cluster which is very power efficient, that is the Cortex-A7s and it's clocked at 1.2 GHz. Also you have a different GPU than what's in this guy, and that one is where I'm seeing a lot of difference and I'll show you that in just a moment. But what you have in here is more comparable to what you have on the iPad 3 or between the iPad 4, between one of those two. That is the Power VR SGX 544 MP3 processor, it's clocked at 533 MHz versus what we have in this guy, which is Adreno 320 for its GPU. It's only clocked at 450 megahertz, so you've got a better GPU and it's clocked a little bit faster, so it's, it's a better GPU. On this guy for the CPU, you've got four cores. You've got Crate 300, it's clocked at 1.9 gigahertz, and I think that they are about even in terms of everyday use. But when looking at their quadrant scores, you can see that the CPU scores on this guy are just a little bit better than what you're seeing on this guy here. So you can see for Quadrant Synthetic Benchmarking that you have a better score overall on the Exynos version versus the Snapdragon version. In real world use, I notice it to be very difficult to find any noticeable differences between both of these devices. This guy, for example, the Exynos version is supposed to be a little bit faster with loading web pages, but oftentimes I find it not to be the case, so it is just going to vary between both of them, but honestly, I think Samsung did a good job with the CPUs for matching performance. When it comes to the GPU and gameplay, the Exynos version absolutely takes it. Some people were saying, no, the Adreno 320 GPU is really great as well, and you're insane if you see any difference. But honestly, with something as simple as Granny Smith, the Adreno 320 on the S600 version skips a little bit here and there, and it's just not so smooth. But with the PowerVR SGX544 MP3 GPU, my goodness, the difference for me is night and day. This just plays so incredibly smooth. If you're going after the Galaxy S4 for its gameplay abilities, I recommend going with the Exynos version hands down. Anyone who tells you that there is not a noticeable difference between them both is either lying to you or just can't tell the difference when there are dropped frames. But I certainly can, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Go with the Exynos version if you are a massive game player or want everything to look perfectly smooth. So how about the audio quality between both of these guys? You know, for you audiophiles who like to plug in your headphones and listen to music, yeah, that type of thing. So a lot of people were very excited about the Exynos version because it has the Wolfson DAC, which means it's supposed to have good audio on a very basic layman's term. Then you have this guy here, and it's just got Qualcomm standard DAC, nothing special, doesn't sound particularly great or anything. So what does Samsung do? Well, Samsung being Samsung decided to add a 
terribly functioning upsampling algorithm, so CD audio has a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Well, on technical terms, these guys, they're supposed to be upsampled, or it's supposed to change from one sampling rate to a higher sampling rate to 48 kilohertz. So just say that you have a sound wave that looks a particular way, but it's at a lower sampling rate. So you need to reconstruct it through what they call interpolation. And at 48 kilohertz, it needs to look just like it did at the 44.1 kilohertz. But Samsung decides to put in a crappy algorithm, so you have a new sound wave now that is not perfectly like the original, so you get nice sounding crap in there, instead of it being really beautiful like the original. So, you have a great digital audio converter in this guy, but uh, yeah, Samsung is Samsung and they don't care sometimes and they do weird things. So, if you're really excited about the DAC that's in this guy, eh, don't be. Please, Francois, fix it or do something. So perceptually, both of these guys, I don't really see one that sounds any better than the other, honestly. Now, the last thing that I would like to get into is the differences in battery life. We have the Exynos version here and the Snapdragon version here. Note first that both of these have been used under very similar conditions. They've been used on both Wi-Fi and HSPA+. Plus. I have not used these on LTE, although I've noticed for mine, because I was back home in California, that the LTE really did not drain the battery significantly, so I don't count LTE as a problem. But yes, both of these have been run in very similar conditions, and I also went on several forums, I've looked at several reviews, and I just did that to get the entire story. And the one thing that I can see to be a constant that really tells you what the battery life is like is the on-screen time. Now, most reviewers will usually take a phone and they will run it through their testing and they'll tell you how long the phone can last until it dies while doing just one thing. Well, that is all great and good, and it's nice to know how long it can last playing video in a loop until it dies, but that doesn't tell you about the real-world usage. It doesn't really tell you anything, actually. So, I have had a chance to play with both of these phones quite a bit, and what I am seeing is that the Snapdragon version just doesn't tend to get as good a screen time as the Exynos version. I run these guys to the ground. I don't just have very slight usage, not even medium usage, but completely heavy usage, and this is the worst case scenario. I'm doing everything from using my phone as a mobile office, typing out emails, checking emails, constantly having emails brought down from the server. I am browsing the internet, I am watching videos on YouTube and Netflix and playing games, you just you name it. And I basically do this until the battery dies. And I have a very regulated usage now, and what I am seeing is that the Exynos version is lasting 4 hours and 30 minutes. A lot of people are reporting 4 hours and 30 minutes, 5 hours, some people even 6 hours at very light usage. And this guy, it's sometimes hits 3 hours for me, sometimes it goes over 4 hours, but really, this guy just seems to do an hour better than this guy does. So, really, the A7 cores, the Cortex A7s that are only running at 1.2 gigahertz for power efficiency, seem to be doing their job. So I mentioned that I worry about battery life being one of those things that can change with updates, but for right now I am seeing that, yeah, the Exynos version wins, and it has a good reason to. So overall, which one of these is my phone of choice? Well, I have to go with the Exynos version, just because of the battery life and the GPU. But if you want the most relevant model and you want to have the new Galaxy Nexus S4, then go with the Snapdragon version. Or like I mentioned, if you don't want to deal with warranty issues, just go with the one that is in your country, whether it's the Exynos version or the Snapdragon. Both of them perform very similarly as phones. You can hardly tell the difference in general use, but there are some basic things like the camera and the GPU that has me rooting for this guy here. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica the Technology Nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Please like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter, you can add me on Google+, and I'm gonna go to bed now. I hope I helped you decide which one is the better one for you. Have a good night. Greetings from France! I have massive phone envy over the Exodus version.